This morning's project, I'll be putting in a couple bilge pumps in my 2008 Superjet. Just got the ski a couple weeks ago. Put the, put them there. It looks like the previous owner may have had some in there. But when I got the ski, he had it sitting back here, exposed wires and everything. Basically, I'm going to be installing two switches. I took out a prime, um, <clears throat> the prime hole there, and then he had a switch here. I'm just going to drill through, I'll show you how I plan to do that. So put two switches on there. I'll create a parts list, but basically, I got the Tsunami 500s. Um, I went and rigged this stuff up just during the week. You know, I got the uh, heat shrinking uh, connectors for everything, terminals as well. Um, what I'm going to use to drill into the uh, the base, some diamond hole saws. I'll create a parts list in case people are interested. I got 12 mil uh, stainless washers. So it's got everything kind of somewhat pre connected up. You can see my design here. This is kind of what would lay out if this is the, the front of the jet ski here. You got two pumps. You got 16 gauge wire that goes, so black is negative. So I got two negatives. So they'll go to the negative terminal and then positive terminal on the battery. You can see how I rigged this. So heat shrinked, the connect terminal connectors goes to a three amp fuse, connected that to a uh, quick disconnect. All I did was cut the, uh, the negatives and left the positives. Base. I don't think the tsunamis, when the switch is off, draw power, but just in case, you know, if the jet ski sit there, didn't want anything drawing power. So I got a quick uh, disconnect there. So once I figure out inside the jet ski the length, I'll just kind of connect those together. These are the two switches. So when I go to installing, we'll see how it goes together. But those are the main parts that are needed. I got some uh, marine epoxy. Uh, There's actually something interesting. <laughs> You'll notice that on these tsunamis, if you push down, you can't disconnect. So before I install this, I'm going to um, I'm going to basically grind down. So if it's sitting flush, you're not going to be able to push down on it. I notice. So I'm just going to grind down that much so that when it's sitting flush. I'll still be able to push down on it to disconnect it in case I needed to like replace the pump or something. Okay, so the first thing I did was prep the surface. Went in there with a little bit of uh, 80 grit sandpaper, cleaned it up with some acetone. But basically the two um, bilge pumps are going to go right there. Put down some marine epoxy. So I went ahead and grinded down the part on the pump so when it's flush you can push down and disengage the pump. And what we're going to work on next is getting some marine epoxy, just putting both of those right there. So here I'm double checking my layout. I got both pumps in there. I'm just trying to check where the pumps are gonna go. Okay, I got the marine epoxy, just kinda focused it in the center. Got one down in there. It's a two hour set time on this epoxy. So I'm just gonna drop that in there and then move on. Okay, I got both of the bases in there setting, two hour set time. You'll see that I used a Sharpie to kind of mark the, um, you know, where I was going to place it. That way, uh, you know, because you got to look where the hose is going to come out. Okay, so next I'm going to work on drilling some holes in the cockpit here for the switches. Here's a switch. So the idea is that the switch will come back through here and then we'll attach them up. Uh, this was. I'm going to repurpose this other hole. This was the primer. Uh, the ski doesn't really need a primer. It starts up right away. I'm just going to repurpose this one. If you don't have something like that, you're going to have to drill a hole. This one also had a switch for the bilge pump. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a, um, a diamond hole cutter. This has been marine epoxy in, which is kind of a bad idea. So I'm going to kind of drill a hole the same size as this one here. I'm going to drill a hole here. Put the switch through and then I have these uh, washers that will fit over it but I need to drill another hole through the turf. I have a, another diamond plate. This is a 26 millimeter diamond plate for the size of the washer so I'm just going to cut a second hole around the first hole where I can cut back that the hydro turf a little bit 
so that that um, so the washer kind of sits right on top. Basically, the switch isn't long enough to get all the way through where I can kind of catch it with the uh, with the washer and the um, you know and the, and the bolt port that came with it. So I got to cut the, the uh, hydro turf back a little bit. You can kind of see how doesn't quite come through so I gotta cut the hydro turf back so I'm gonna work on that next so I decided to keep the primer and instead install a second hole just so it's a little bit more symmetric I think it's gonna look better so what I did was I used a 26 millimeter uh, diamond hole saw to kind of start the the bigger cut first and then I used a uh, 16 mil for the uh, smaller hole. And that's a uh, pretty decent size, a little bit of space. Probably could have gotten a little tighter. But you know, the switch goes in there nice. I'll probably put a little silicone in there with it, but enough room for the uh, the washer and everything once it comes through. I got the uh, positive terminals hooked up here. You can see that coming here to the fuse. Two three amp fuses. Did some cable management. These are the uh, quick connects. Got them ready to go. And then put the switches in back here. Decided to leave the, um, <clears throat> the primer in. So pretty simple, you know, primed it out. Some primer and then they just screw in, you know, with the washer. But these are the two switches, ready to roll. Looks a little bit more even. All right, I think that looks a little bit better, leaving the primer in. Okay, so next, I gotta keep following the uh, positives over to the side. I gotta drill another billet hole like this on the other side. Or this is the ablation um, eyelet. Got it marked on the other side, basically the exact same spot. Basically, put some tape. And here's what it looks like once you uh, drill a hole through it. So, pretty simple. Okay, here's the final rundown. I got the negative sealed connectors here. Connecting to a three amp fuse. Got some cable management going on here. I got my quick connects. And it goes to the switch. Got two switches. And so the switches turned out. Pretty happy with them blacked out, put the mat on them. Pretty simple, looks good from the back. And then some more cable management here. This is under here to the front. Kind of attached to this, coming down this positive, down to the build pumps. So the one on the left did not set right. I don't know if it was just uneven on the bottom, but the one on the right set pretty good. I wanted to take it out so I didn't want to wait a full 24 hours for it to cure. But yeah, there's the left one. There's the right one. I don't know why they sound a little different, but uh, that's it. Uh, one other thing, I put in a flush. The guy I bought the jet ski from pretty much just rid it into the lake. So. Basically, I think this is a 3 8 uh, hose that goes right to the top of the block. And I just teed that off with some parts from um, from Lowe's. Basically, it's just a brass tee with some stainless rings, 3 8 water hose. Um, you know, basically put the nipple on there and then the shutoff valve. And I just leave this uh, shut off, obviously, while you're riding. If it was like this, it might let water in the engine. But pretty easy flush hookup. It just kind of stays pretty snug under there. That's it. There you go. It's the dual bilge install.